By Jennifer Scott BBC News Image Copyright PA What skills do you look for in a Prime Minister? Is it being a good communicator? Having business acumen? A connection with real people? Or is it how they shake their money maker to disco classics? On Wednesday, Theresa May seemed to focus on the letter, making her entrance for her big conference speech by boogieing to a boss dancing queen. It's not the first time the PM has shown off her footwork. On the first day of a trade mission to Africa in August, she attempted to dance with a group of schoolchildren. Media playback is unsupported on your device. Media caption Theresa May was all smiles as she joined schoolchildren dancing in South Africa. It's fair to say her moves weren't universally acclaimed, wooden and cringeworthy being two widely used adjectives. Others, though, praised her willingness to get stuck in and have fun. Indeed, it wasnt long until her toes were tapping again, as just two days later, she mimicked the moves of a group of scouts in Nairobi, Kenya. Media playback is unsupported on your device. Media caption MRS May danced with a group of scouts during a visit to UN offices when she returned to the UK. Mrs May embraced the attention her moves had attracted, even offering professionals her advice. But while she tweeted, others reacted in differing ways. She got the backing of some, like the original robot dancer and footballer Peter Crouch. Others were happier to criticize her moves. But we had not seen the last of the dancing Prime Minister, as Mrs May headed on stage on Wednesday to give her crunch speech to party conference, to show she could lead both the country and her members, and try to silence her critics, she thought there was only one way to do it. Media playback is unsupported on your device media caption to the music of a boss dancing queen. Theresa May opens her conference speech Downing Street insisted that her latest groove was spontaneous. They said they had decided to queue up the Abna track simply because the PM likes it. It was one of her desert island discs after all. But they claimed they had not expected her to start getting down to it. Last year's conference speech was disastrous for Mrs. May. She struggled with a terrible cough, was interrupted by a prankster and had to deal with a collapsing set. The consensus is she couldn't ignore all that this time and had to confront it instead. So confronted she did, from the dancing right through to joking about supergluing the backdrop, she got the support of some of her more loyal MPs for her humor. Some political commentators also welcomed her willingness to mock herself and present a friendlier, funnier side. And the Swedish ambassador to the UK praised her choice of tune. But there were some skeptics on the ground who thought it may have been a little more planned. And position MPs felt it was just a distraction tactic from bigger issues, as well as ruining their favourite song. But BBC political correspondent Chris Mason was sold on her performance. While I become a pound shop political Bruno Tonioli with some trepidation, and this sort of stuff is guaranteed to make some groan, I thought the PM's jiggy thingy was great, he said. Using Dancing Queen as her music to arrive on stage two, and then busting some moves, as I think I'm meant to describe it, was novel and self-deprecating. Will this suddenly mean her most ardent critics will be won over? No, but does it help humanize the Prime Minister dubbed the Maybot? Yes, did it work for you?